St. Peter's University. Uh, that's in Jersey City, by the way. It's a really small school. Um, so, like so many of you know very well, this past week has been one of confusion and disappointment. Uh, it has been difficult trying to write this public witness and trying to put into words the overwhelming emotions that have been resurfacing uh, for me this week, especially. Being completely honest, I have written and rewritten what I think best explains it. Uh, and while reflecting on this, I was brought back to a feeling that first surfaced when I was about five, which is voicelessness. My mom was born in Mexico, and my dad was born in Colombia, which leads me to believe I won the food lottery, by the way. <laughs> um, but both are countries that, due to extreme pressure from poverty, violence, political uncertainty, and uncertainty about survival, my parents had to flee in the 90s. Here? Oh, yeah. And so, due to those circumstances, I am the daughter of undocumented immigrants. Being able to say this today has been a battle that I have fought for so long, um, not because of shame or unwillingness, because this is very much a part of who I am, and I am infinitely grateful and proud to my parents, um, but because of fear and the feeling of voicelessness. Listening to this dialogue the past 18 months surrounding immigrants has frightened me and disheartened me. This couldn't be my family they're talking about. My parents are loving and generous and wise and hardworking. I was immediately transported to five-year-old me, learning for the first time about my family's situation. I vividly remember my parents sitting me down to have this discussion with me. The fear, the nervousness in their eyes and their voices, telling me this huge secret that I had to make sure to conceal, to lock up tight, in order to protect my family. I felt it was my duty to make sure this was never known to protect them. So imagine this for a second. You're playing with a classmate, you're in kindergarten class. Randomly, this huge secret just pops up in your head. Fear envelops you as you wonder if that morning would be the last time you spent with them. If that was the last time you hugged your parents trying to remember if you told them you love them. Your teacher notices and asks if you're okay. So you want to blurt it out. Tell your secrets. Have someone else carry it for those five minutes. But you can't. So voicelessness. So friends, what now? With the privilege provided to me by the sacrifice of my parents, I am an American citizen. And I'm no longer a child. So now I know. I know that I am not voiceless. And it is my responsibility, my obligation to speak up for my parents, to speak up for five-year-old me, to speak up for the countless families and children living in fear and in isolation, especially today. So friends, it is time for you to use your privilege, your voice, to speak for those who have been silenced, for those children who carry this burden, those parents who are terrified of what the future holds for their family. This, the morning after the election, my parents gave me big hugs and apologized to me. I was so confused. I asked them, why are you apologizing to me? And they told me, I am sorry that you are in this situation, that we put you in this situation. No parents should apologize to their kids for trying to provide a future for them. It is time for you guys to empower others by empowering yourself and taking this great gift that you have of being able to speak to your legislators. Empower yourselves. Speak for five-year-old me, five-year-old kids, 10-year-old kids. I'm 20 now, and this is still a fear I have every day. So thank you so much for all the work you're doing. Thank you for standing up for us. Woo!